I've been rejected a billion times. Maybe serialization is not for you. You have to show up every single day to make or break if you're gonna survive in this industry. Hello and welcome to the Mangaka Education Podcast where we talk about the business side of manga and webtoons and anime. I'm Brad Chen, I'm a professional in the manga, webtoons, novels, and video game space. I write for all those things. And today we're going to be talking about five habits that I accumulated over many years of being an author that have helped me become a successful manga and webtoon author. Let's get right into the video. First one's going to be pretty obvious, but it's interesting because a lot of people don't follow this and its practice is super important. A lot of people think that they're going to do their first story and their first story is going to be the first thing you know their big naruto or the big one piece serialization actually for me it was probably my seventh or eighth story that went to serialization i had done many one shots i had done many novels i had done many video game attempts comic attempts stories that were not really good i guess for my whatever you want to call magnum opus or my first actual serialized project with a publisher and i feel like a lot of aspiring creators really think that their initial story their first story that they've been working on for seven years is going to be the story that gets serialized when in reality it's actually a practice story in my opinion it's a story that you you develop and you practice and then you do that first story maybe it doesn't get picked up but then your second story maybe that gets picked up practice is the most important thing and being able to understand that if your first story which is the story that you worked really hard on might not make it that's okay because there's lots of stories out there that you will be hopefully doing it's a lifetime venture so that's from the writing side from the art side obviously practice makes perfect and that's going to be going into our second thing, which is ultimately on discipline and work ethic. Discipline is super interesting and it's super important for serializing manga and webtoons because you have to show up every single day to be able to write manga and webtoons, right? You have to show up every single day. If you miss a day, you're probably going to set your entire project behind and you might not meet your weekly deadline. So if you can't force yourself to pretty much write and draw every single day, then maybe serialization is not for you. But that's a habit that you develop over time. It's not just something where you're just like, all right, today I'm going to show up and start writing every single day for the rest of the, you know, it's something that you develop over time. It's, it takes an enormous amount of discipline. It takes an enormous amount of work ethic to be able to show up and write 50 hours a week, 50 to hundred hours a week. You're spending like most of your life creating something. So it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort, but you have to really force yourself to show up every single day and even if you feel like oh wow i don't really feel like getting up today i don't feel like drawing today i don't feel like writing today it doesn't matter you have to show up every single day unless you're sick if you're sick then maybe you can take a break right but um for the most part it's not based on if you feel like writing you write because you have to write or you draw because you have to draw that's kind of what serialization is because we don't feel like going to work every day that's how we are as humans but we do it because we have to meet our deadline super important and that ties also into the first topic of practice because you have to show up every single day to practice to write new stories to get Get better to draw to get better and like constantly improve yourself and you can only do that through iterative development over time number three which obviously is very important is studying the craft the craft of manga the craft of anime the craft of webtoons you have to be studying at all times and you have to be reading and watching things with a with a very analytical eye so when you're watching live action films even you could be studying oh how did the filmmaker do it this way that's a very interesting shot maybe i should use that shot in my serialization oh wow the story of xyz was really interesting maybe there's a way I can incorporate it into my story. Wow, this manga panel, super great. One Piece, Sakamoto Days, great manga panel. I would love to see how I can use it as a reference for something that I'm doing. Basically looking at every single aspect and facet of your life in terms of entertainment, not just entertainment, but also like experiences and being able to draw from that and seeing how it can apply to your own work is super important. Sometimes it makes it hard to just sit back and enjoy the project. You can have your own time and be like, wow, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy Into the Spider-Verse or whatever. Then maybe you can watch it a second time and look at it from a really analytical perspective and see like why did this work for the audience how can i incorporate what worked here into something that i'm doing that can also help me work don't copy use inspired uh, use inspired <laughs> use inspiration don't copy so habit number four which is also pretty much a make or break if you're going to survive in this industry is being open to feedback there's this book i read called ego is the enemy which is ultimately something on on ego if you think you're at the top of the world i actually have a sticky note here i'm going to read this real quick there is always more to learn in your field that's that's one of my sticky notes 
There's another one that says, be confident, but remember you cannot get better if you believe you're the best, which is facts, which is facts. If you believe that you are immune to feedback, think again, because you should always know that there's a way to make your story better. There is no such thing as like a perfect story. No matter how much you think a story is perfect, there's always someone out there that hates it. It's just how it is because stories are objective. So always being open to feedback and how other per people perceive your stories. This is super important because if you work in the manga or webtoon industry, you have editors and editors might clash with you and your vision. Creative directors or creative people at the very top making the decisions on whether or not to green light your story might be like, you yeah, know, like, you know, your story is good, but what if we did this? And you might be like, wow, that's so dumb. That's fine if you think it's dumb, but at the same time, you have to be open-minded to their feedback. If you can't work with other people, there's no way you're going to survive in the manga and webtoon industry. There's no way. Unless you're doing a story that's completely funded by yourself, there's no way that you're going to survive. Teamwork and collaboration is super important. And the best way to foster teamwork and collaboration is by being open to feedback. You might be working with an artist who might give you an additional way to do a scene. If you're not open to that idea, they're also going to despise you. They're going to be like, wow, this guy's not willing to listen to me. Okay, great. Well, now you just lost yourself an artist. So being open to feedback, super important, not just in art and manga, but in life. Life lesson right there, guys. Open to feedback and managing your ego. The fifth and final habit, in my opinion, that's super important is being able to balance creativity and the markets. What does that mean? I'll give a good example using one of my series, Just the Goblin. From my perspective, when I originally created the concept i was in college i wanted to create a concept that was i think it was inspired by reincarnation of a slime where you have a monster that's very underrated like slimes are underrated goblins are underrated so i create a concept that's all focused around this concept of a goblin goblin as the main character i wanted to just follow this goblin as he explores a fantasy world and how he's the underdog that's a little bit of a creatively jarring and risky topic for a publisher to take on so you have to think about the market so the reason i made it like a system fantasy story is because soul leveling was something that was very popular at the time and my co-writer jack was really good at writing system fantasy so i was like okay system fantasy is really big in korea really big in japan really big in china and it is growing in the united states because of the rise of soul leveling and all these Korean and japanese properties so why don't we incorporate that into this risky idea that i had to make it more of a market fit so it's like oh wow people who want to read system fantasy would just read this for the system fantasy and then we'll draw them in to this riskier concept and then like fuse them together and it becomes like something that feels fresh feels new but also familiar right i think that's the key thing is ultimately creating stories that are fresh and new but also familiar because if it's not familiar then it's too out there and the reader's not going to connect and they're not going to be interested and it's too risky for a lot of publishers to take on it's okay to take risk but if you take too much risk then you risk not being picked up and not being published, which ultimately will prevent you from being able to share your story with the world. Making sure that you're balancing your creativity with something that has a market fit is super important because if your project doesn't sell, then it's gonna get axed early and you won't be able to tell the story that you wanna tell anyway. The only way to take 100% risk is if you fund something completely by yourself and you throw it out there and you hope for the best. It's a, it's a big risk. Balancing creativity and market fit is super important. A lot of people don't do that. They just make what they wanna make, which is totally fine. But at the same time, just be prepared to take rejection which is should be another habit on here which is taking rejection rejection is super important it's a super big part of the process i've been rejected a billion times in all aspects of my life finding jobs getting published women like being used to rejection is super important that should be my number six six habits but rejection is also super important i want to give you guys another bonus tip here in terms of like a habit and it's on organization the reason this is not part of the, like the original five or six habits that i had for planned for this video is because i don't think i'm that organized myself i kind of just like think oh like you know today is a day i'm gonna write god game just the goblin samurai tour i'll write these three chapters today boom done okay great then tomorrow i do this xyz not that organized i'll be honest with you guys i'm not that organized that's why i can only do 10 series right now if i were actually organized and i maximize my time i could probably do 20 i'll be honest with you guys however organization super important if you want to be serializing for a weekly process you want to be preparing yourself for being able to pump out chapters and, and work daily being organized is a great way to make sure to maximize your time because on a weekly schedule you only have like seven days to put out the next chapter so you have to have a very organized structured day in order to make sure that you meet those deadlines i'd say that organization is something i can personally work on i've never been an organized person but it's something i could personally work on i think that's something that all of you guys should be also keeping in your mind as a habit as you're going through your process as a creative and that is today's video and our podcast episode thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions that you want me to answer on the next q a type video that i'm doing typically for the manga Kai education podcast make sure to drop those in the comments and also make sure to check out my publications and my works by clicking the link in the description for my website brandon chin at the card thank you guys so much for watching drop a like drop a subscribe follow see you guys later peace